in our next few mini lectures, we're going to be taking our um, study of current and resistance much further and linking resistors and batteries and even eventually capacitors into circuits. And we're going to analyze those circuits in a bunch of different ways. We're going to think about the power that our resistors can dissipate. We're going to think about more about the charge that capacitors can store. And we're going to think about those elements all connected together to create one larger and more complicated circuit. So this is an example of how you can take individual pieces and interconnect them together into a larger system. Um, so I don't know, I guess there's an analogy between this and um, let's say a human body. Our human body is composed of individual organs that all do their function, but whenever we link them together into the entire body system, they work together in order to accomplish a common goal. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about these interconnected systems of um, resistors and capacitors and batteries to explore how, um, how uh, electricity behaves within a connected system. I'm going to call this kind of mini unit here, circuit analysis, where again, we take those pieces of uh, resistors and capacitors and batteries and put them all together into a connected system and really analyze what's going on within them. So here's a cute little cartoon of, we've got a battery and some resistors and some capacitors, uh, all very happy <laughs> within the circuit. We've already talked about resistors in series and parallel in lab, but we're gonna see it here in lecture two. When we have resistors in parallel, the current coming through the wire up here has to separate to run through each of these resistors and then that current has to combine back down here. So the total current for our resistors in parallel is equal to the sum of the current through each of these individual resistors. So the current adds up together into uh, through all of our resistors in parallel. Now we saw from Ohm's law that V is equal to IR. The potential is equal to the current times the resistance. So if we solve that quantity for the current, the current is equal to V over R. So I can replace all of these instances of current with V over R. Our total current is then the total potential supplied by our batteries or power source divided by our total resistance. And then that equals the potential across resistor one divided by its resistance plus the potential across resistor two divided by its resistance and so on. But importantly, whenever we're in parallel, all of our elements here in parallel receive the same voltage. So the total voltage supplied to this combination of, um, of, of resistors in parallel is the same as the total voltage that's being supplied by, let's say a battery or a power source. So each one of these resistors on their own is receiving that same potential, which is the same potential that's being supplied by the battery. So since V total is equal to V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V3, those potentials are all the same. You can factor that out of this equation. Therefore, you get the relationship that one over the total resistance of this combination of resistors is equal to one over the first resistance plus one over the second resistance plus one over the third and so on. That's for our resistors in parallel. Now for our resistors in series, the current, the same current has to run through sequentially all of these resistors. Okay, so in series, the total potential of our, of these uh, resistors in series, the total potential across them is the sum of their individual potentials. So the total potential of this combination would be the sum of the potential across R1 plus the potential across R2 plus the potential across R3 and so on. Okay, so if the battery supplies 12 volts of um, potential, then the sum of the potential across R1, R2, R3, and R4 must also equal 12 volts. Now, V is equal to IR, so we can replace all of these instances with a V with I times R. So I total times the total resistance is equal to I1, R1, plus I2, R2, and so on. For all of these resistors in series, the current is the same. 
So the total current in the circuit is equal to the current through resistor one is equal to the current through resistor two and so on. So all of these currents are the same. You can factor them out, they cancel on both sides. Then you're left with the total resistance is equal to the sum of the individual resistors that are here in series. So that's how we can start with these ideas for current and potential in series or parallel and derive those equations for how we treat the resistances of our resistors in series or parallel. Let's apply those ideas really quick here in order to think about which two of these circuits provide the most total power in the circuit. So in each circuit, we have a nine volt battery. And in each circuit, we have two 18 ohm resistors. In this first one, we have those two 18 ohm resistors in series. The total resistance in series adds together. So the total power, you know, there's all of these equations for power. Power is I times V, it's V squared over R, it's I squared times R. So here we're gonna use V squared over R. So the total power for the circuit is equal to the potential of my battery squared divided by the total resistance. So nine squared over the sum of these resistances. And that gives us a power for this total circuit of 2.25 Watts. Um, we can also find the total power in this circuit by finding the power that's dissipated by the first resistor and adding it to the power that's dissipated by the second resistor. Now, since these are in series with each other, when we're in series, the potential has to add. They both have the same resistance. So that means that um, the 18 ohm resistor has a potential of 4.5 volts across it. This 18 ohm resistor also has a potential of 4.5 volts across it. 4.5 plus 4.5 gives you nine volts. So if I find the power for each one of these resistors individually, that will be their individual potentials across them, if I can measure with my voltmeter here, divided by their resistance. So their power would be the, the potential squared divided by their resistance. Then we would have 4.5 volts squared over 18 ohms plus 4.5 volts squared over 18 ohms. That also gives us 2.5 watts for the power dissipated by this circuit. Now let's look over here at our same two resistors, but this time they're in parallel. When we're in parallel, then the total power for the circuit is still V squared over the total resistance. V is still nine volts. The total resistance here, remember that when we are in parallel, the total resistance is the inverse relationship. So you've got one over R1 plus one over R2. You take the inverse of that, that's the total resistance. So the total resistance of resistors in parallel is less than the total resistance for resistors in series. When we do this, we find that the total power for this circuit is nine watts. Okay, much larger than for those two same two resistors and the same battery in series. And we can find the power dissipated by each individual resistor, their individual V squareds divided by their resistance. And so that when we're in parallel, each one of these resistors gets the same potential. It's gonna get the same potential as this nine volt battery here because there's no other resistors anywhere else in this circuit. So then um, they both get a potential of nine volts. They both have a resistance of 18 ohms and then we can find their individual powers and add them together to also get nine watts. So the same two resistors, the same battery, when you put them in parallel, they dissipate more power than when you put them in series. Just like when we were studying capacitors and we had um, you know, a combination of capacitors arranged in different ways to find the equivalent capacitance, we are going to talk about how you can find the equivalent resistance of a circuit. So the method to doing this is the same as the method to find the equivalent um, capacitance of a collection of capacitors. We're going to identify pieces of our circuit that are in series or parallel. And then we're gonna treat each of those. We're gonna reduce those components until we 
arrive at a final resistance or the equivalent resistance or the total resistance of our circuit. And along the way, we can draw diagrams to help us with keeping track of that record of um, where did we start and where did we end up. And sometimes along the way, it's helpful to maybe find the current through some of those um, equivalent resistances. And sometimes it's useful to find the current through some of those branches in order to help us better break apart the system. So for example, I'm looking at this circuit right here. I immediately see I've identified these three that are in parallel and these two that are in parallel. So I can immediately take those components and reduce them to one equivalent resistance. And then that would be this new image here. Now I see that these two resistors which we got by combining these two over here. These are now in series with each other, so we can combine them. And now I have two equivalent resistances that are in parallel, so I can reduce them with our equation for resistances in parallel. And then finally, I'm left with um, two resistors that are in series. And then I can combine those into equivalent resistances in order to get the final total resistance of our system. So we're going to work through an example of how to do this. Here, our goal is to solve a problem involving both series and parallel resistors. So our first order of business here for this problem is to find the total resistance of this circuit. That's the same thing as saying I want to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. When I ask for the equivalent resistance, that's essentially finding the total resistance of this whole thing. I could take all these resistors out and replace them with one resistor that has that equivalent resistance, same resistance. That's what it means when I'm asking for an equivalent resistance or, or even equivalent capacitance when we were talking about that earlier. So. In order to find the total resistance of this combination of resistors, I have to break it up into a couple of different pieces. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine both of these resistors, which are in series, and also combine both of these resistors here, which are in parallel. Okay. So to, and we're gonna, we're gonna combine those resistances and create a new diagram that represents this diagram, but we've, we've combined these two in series and these two in parallel. Okay, so I'm gonna call the resistance, the total resistance of these two in series, I'm gonna call that R12, okay? So since these are in series, when we're in series, our resistances just add up so the total resistance of these two in series will just be R1 plus R2. So that will be 8 ohms plus 4 ohms, and that will give us a resistance of 12 ohms. Okay, for these two in parallel, I'm going to call that R34. Uh, okay, when our resistances are in parallel, they um, combine together using this inverse relationship. So I can say one over the combination of these two in parallel equals one over R3 plus one over R4. So this is the same thing as saying R34 is equal to one over R3 plus one over R4 to the minus one or the inverse. We take the inverse of both sides, one over one divided by R3 gives us back R3, and then one divided by this whole combination here, we can write that as the inverse of one over R3 plus one over R4. We can write it like this. Okay, so this is equal to one over six ohms plus one over three ohms, all to the minus one, the inverse of that. And that gives us a resistance of two ohms. Okay, so we see that when our resistors are in series, they add to be, the total resistance adds to be greater than any of these two on their own. 
and then when our resistances are in parallel, they combine to be less than the resistances of any of these two on their own. So I can replace these two resistors in parallel with one resistor that has a resistance of 12 ohms. I'll call this R12. And I can replace these two resistors with a resistance of 2 ohms, a resistor that has a resistance of 2 ohms. I'll call this R34, and that resistance is 2 ohms. So now, these two combined together are in series with each other. So if I add these two in series, when we're in series, the resistances add. So our total resistance will be the resistance of this one, which I called 1, 2, plus the resistance of this one, which I call 3, 4. So that total resistance will be 12 ohms plus 2 ohms, and that will give us 14 ohms. Okay, so the total resistance of this combination of resistors is 14 ohms. Previously, we combined our resistors together to create um, this set of resistors, and then I combined these two in series to create the total resistance of this combination of resistors. So we combined and we made a couple of new diagrams that all represent the same circuit here. And then I went ahead and I drew a chart or a table over here to keep track of some of my values. So resistor 1 has a resistance of 8 ohms, R2, 4 ohms, R3, 6 ohms, R4, 3 ohms. Our combination of these two resistors gave us 12 ohms. Our combination of these two resistors gave us 2 ohms here. And then our combination of all the resistors together gave us a total resistance of 14 ohms. And now our task is to find the current through each one of these four resistors. So I want to find the current through resistors 1, 2, 3, and 4. The currents might not necessarily be the same through all of them because these two are in parallel, so the current had to split. The current is coming through these two resistors in series, and then my current has to split between this top resistor and this bottom resistor. So all of these are not going to have the same current, and we need to figure out what that current is. We might as well find the potential across all of these um, resistors as well. Now, uh, in order to do that, um, we're going to start with our total resistance here and use that to find what is my total current, and then we'll use some of the rules for our resistors in series and parallel. Then let's first find the total current in our circuit. Remember Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So if I solve that for I, the total current will give me, uh, the total current will equal our total potential divided by our total resistance. Okay, and that will be our total current running through the circuit. Oh, what I didn't tell you, we have to connect this combination of resistors to a battery in order to supply a current. So let's connect this combination of resistors to a 42 volt battery. So the total potential of my circuit here will be 42 volts, okay? So I know the total resistance in my current is 14 ohms. I know the total potential supplied by my battery is 42 volts. So I can use that to find the total current in my circuit. So that total current will be our 42 volts divided by our 14 ohms of the total resistance, and that gives us a total current of three amperes. Okay, so my total current here is three amperes. Okay, so let's look here in this step where I drew my kind of equivalent circuit diagram. The combination of these two resistors in series, which I called R12, the combination of these two resistors in parallel, which I call R34, 
these are in series with each other, okay? And when we are in series, our current running through those equivalent resistors is the same. So this equivalent resistor R12 has a current of also three amperes running through it. And our equivalent resistor R34 also has a current of three amperes running through it. Now, since R12 is made up of a combination of resistor one and resistor two in series, where resistors in series have the same current, so that means that resistor one and resistor two have the same current through them as either of these two equivalent resistors here. So R1 and R2 both have a current also of three amperes. Three amperes. Okay, so now we can figure out, we might as well go ahead and figure out what the potential is across these resistors. So in order to find the potential across a resistor, we use Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So the potential across resistor one is the current through it times its resistance. So that will be three amperes times its resistance of eight ohms, and that gives us a potential of 24 volts, okay, across resistor one. And across resistor two, we do the same thing. V2 is equal to I2 R2. So the, the current running through resistor two here is also our three amperes. And the resistance of resistor two is four ohms. And that gives us a potential across resistor two of three times four, that's 12 volts. 12 volts here, okay? So these two in series, when we've got our resistors in series, the potential across them adds. For resistor one and resistor two, the potential will add across them. So the potential across this equivalent resistor, R12, is the sum of the potential for resistor one and resistor two. And so the potential across our equivalent resistor here, R12, is going to be the sum of the potential ac across resistor one and resistor two. And so that will be 24 volts plus 12 volts, and that will give us 36 volts, okay? So if I came in here with my voltmeter, I wanna measure the potential across here, I would get 36 volts. That would be the same as if I put my probes here and here, and I found the potential across here. That would also give me 36 volts. Well, now let's think about resistors three and four here, okay? We don't have their current or their potential yet. Well, let's see. We know that when resistors add in series, their potential adds. So, the voltage or the potential drop across resistor one, two here, plus the voltage drop across my equivalent resistor three, four here, has to equal the total potential supplied by our battery. So this has to equal V, which was the potential supplied by our battery. We already know what the potential is across this resistor here, R12. So we can solve this for the potential across this equivalent resistor here, R34. So the potential across that resistor will be the total potential supplied by our battery minus the potential across resistors one, two in combination. So this will equal the potential supplied by my battery is 42 volts minus the potential across my resistor one and two in combination, which is 36 volts. That means that my potential across resistor three, four here is 42 volts minus 36 volts or six volts. So over here, my resistor three, four has three amperes of current and it will have a potential of six volts. Now you could also find this 
by using V is equal to IR for that resistor. If V is equal to IR, we already know the current through this equivalent resistor. We already know its total resistance here. So 3 times 2 would give me 6 volts. So then if I came in here with my voltmeter and measured right here, I would find a potential of 6 volts. And since these are in series, 36 plus 6 should add to give me my total potential supplied by my battery, which is 42 volts, and it does. Okay, so we have these two resistors yet to fill in their slots. All right, so this will be our final step to get the potential and, and current through all of these bits of our circuit. Now, when our resistors are in parallel, they have the same potential across them. So if my combination of resistors three and four here, my equivalent resistance for these two, has a potential of six volts across it, that means that both of these resistors, since they're in parallel, will also have a, pot a potential of six volts um, across them too. So uh, the potential across resistor three will equal the potential across resistor four, will equal <laughs> the potential across my resistor, which is the combination of three and four, and that's six volts for all of those. So over here, we're running out of ink. Resistor three and resistor four both have six volts of potential across them. So if I came in here with my voltmeter and I measured here and here, and I measured here and here, I would get six volts for each of those. Okay, and then I can find the current running through each of them by saying that, let's see, already we rearranged Ohm's law to solve for I. So I3 will equal V3 over R3. So that will be six volts divided by the resistance of R3 is six ohms. So I3, the current running through resistor three, is one ampere, one ampere. Now if I do the same thing for this fourth resistor, if I do, running out of room here, I4 is equal to V4 over R4, okay, that's equal to the potential across resistor four was six volts, divide it by the resistance of resistor four which is three ohms, and that gives me a current of two amperes through resistor four, two amperes. Okay, now, we also see that the current through parallel circuits must add to give you the total current. So the total current that was coming in through here was three amperes. It has to split that current to run through this top resistor and to run through the bottom resistor. So the current through my top resistor here, um, that's my resistor three, was one ampere. The current through my bottom resistor here was two amperes. So two amperes plus one ampere gives me three amperes. So we are satisfying all of these rules for series and parallel circuits within, um, within our circuit analysis here. So when you're presented with a circuit analysis problem, maybe I gave you this problem and I asked you to find the current through resistor four. Okay, probably the best way to approach that problem is to create a table like this. You've got all of your resistors and your equivalent resistors here. You've got the total resistance. And then you find the current and the potential across each of those elements. You have to break it down and solve it a little bit like a puzzle using also our rules for series and parallel circuits in order to get at the current or the potential across any of these individual resistors.